We are back for part two of the update 7 11 refines. This time we'll talk about Mini Marth and the remixes for Mythic Plumeria and Legendary Dimitri. If you missed part one, we already went over refines for Flame Emperor, Altena, Mamori, and Alcyon. Check that out if you're interested. Back to Mini Marth, who is a sword infantry unit. I believe he is our first seasonal four star focus unit to get a refine, and that's because he had the Rapier. Same weapon as Fina, but since she's a dancer, the devs decided to give Marth a brand new Brilliant Rapier instead. Not only does Mini Marth have a unique weapon, but he's got a unique special called Hero's Blood. This is the same as Legendary Marth's Fire Emblem special. The Brilliant Rapier still grants plus 3 speed and is effective against armored and cavalry foes. If the foe initiates combat or has more than 75% HP, Marth gets plus 4 stats and neutralizes the foe's speed defense field boss. He then has, still or he still has, Vantage 3, although the HP condition went from 75% to 80%. So far, we've just added stats and low speed and defense. For the refine, if Marth initiates combat or is near an ally, he gets plus X to all stats and deals true damage per hit equal to 15% of his speed. The bonus stats for Marth is 4, plus the highest bonus on each stat between Marth and the allies within two spaces, calculated independently. This is just bonus doubler 4. As a review of Hero's Blood, it's a 2 quid on special that boosts damage by 30% speed. After it procs, grant plus 4 field boss to all allies on the field, including Marth. So, for Brilliant Rapier, nothing too crazy, it still has a dual effective sword with built in vantage. Marth now gets plus 8 total stats, low speed and defense, bonus double 4, and true damage scaling off of speed. Like LCN, Marth is decently fast but won't be as min maxed as a modern sword master. With plus 8 stats and bonus doubler, he can boost overall performance, but Hero's Blood doesn't really buff Marth up until after a fight. Unlike Brave Marth, Mini Marth also needs to get hurt for his vantage to work, which can be an issue versus pre-charged burst specials or just super strong initiators. In general, Mini Marth does have less tools compared to Brave Marth's Refine. I guess that's expected from a 4 star focus versus CYL winner. For Mini Marth, he won't have the best pure 1v1 combat, but Vantage and his effective damage can be played around for some cheesy kills. If you want, bring back the old Distant Counter plus Vantage meta. Special Spar 4, or Special Spar I should say, was already a good option to spam Hero's Blood on the Vantage swing. With the tier 4 upgrade, the DR piercing just makes sure Marth gets those KOs. To further empower Marth, try to always buff him up to get bonus doubler active. This kind of build, though, has zero damage reduction, so Marth kinda just wants as much stats as he can get, especially before Vantage is ready. If you have Brave Robin's Rally Spectrum, Marth can immediately proc Hero's Blood on Vantage. If you have Legendary Alir, we can do a little switcheroo and she can give Marth DR piercing specials. With these types of support, you could slot in Nelsie Disrupt to counter Fire Sweep units. Just one issue with this plan is Mini Mart needs to get hurt first for Vanish to proc. For a more brawling type build, you could just stack all the stats by leaning into bonus doubler stacking. If Mart loses field buzz though, then you're basically screwed. If you want, you could run Unity for a legendary Mart type angle. Panic Smoke 4 can also lead into enemy stack chaos. With any high stat focus unit, no follow up is always great to beat up slower foes. For defense, Mart would like percent DR, you can run dodge beast goes, and maybe you can run vital astra instead of hero's blood. Marth cannot pre-charge it normally with time spells, but you could run the special spiral setup for some dodge DR. For other skills though, hexblade is interesting if you need to one shot vantage foes. Brett type cooldown can be used with vantage for some different setups like say maybe gambit and miracle. It's just to be annoying. If you do swap Hero's Blood out, Marth should be able to use Attuned Skills. It just feels kind of sad to drop your exclusive special. Unfortunately, that's kind of just a product of Agent Power Creep. Shining Emblem is just way better, especially for Bonus Doubler. Still, as a Forester Focus Unit, Mini Marth has his own niche. You drop some common Sword Master perks like no Fall Up or Dodge, but Vantage is still probably one of the most tilting things to lose to. Moving on to our remixes for the update, Mythic Plumeria is our next fairy dancer to get some upgrades. She's an Astro Mythic, so 8th Ring Offense is her place. Let's start with her remixed Sweet Dreams Plus. Grants another action to an ally and grant plus 5 field buffs to all stats, a player phase follow up status, and the Hexblade status to that ally for one turn. At the same time, inflict minus 5 debuffs to all stats on the nearest foe within 5 spaces of an ally. Now, Sweet Dream's Field Buffs went from plus 3 to plus 5, and the debuffs went from minus 4 to minus 5 with a longer debuffing range. New to the dance is that Fall Up Attack status, which is player phase only, and the rather fun Hexblade status for adaptive damage. If you need extra tank busting power, Plumeria can enchant your team's weapons. 
Now, for her Flower of Plenty Refine, the base weapon got some updates. It grants plus three flat res and has a drive buff of plus four attack and res for allies within five rows and three columns. This is a box. It does not extend across the map. If Plumeria has an ally in that buffing range, she herself will get plus five attack and res in combat. The support drive buff got bumped up by one point and Plumeria gets combat power. For the extra refine, at start of combat, if above 25% health, Plumeria gets plus five attack and res again and a free follow up attack. After combat, if she did attack, you inflict gravity on the foe and on foes within one space of that. As a dancer, Plumeria's refine only adds plus one attack and res to her support power. The rest will come from her remixed dance. Flower of Plenty instead gives Plumeria the basic combat boost of plus 10 attack and resistance, a fall attack, and the AoE gravity. Plumeria is insanely slow, so any fall up effects would just mess with her. If you want to attack an enemy, she also has no defense, so not the safest idea at all times. However, if you can get an attack off safely, AoE gravity is annoying and can slow enemies down. The only issue is that Plumeria's base combat power is not the best and generally we want our dancers to dance. If you want to utilize the AoE gravity, Plumeria has the option of using skills like Wings of Mercy to fly in, finish off a target, and then gravity the surrounding foes. However, she literally just gets plus in attack and res and a follow up for combat. This is the most basic of basic set of combat perks. You could add remote mirror for damage reduction, but flared mirror is coming next banner if you want another way to apply divine vein flank tiles. Gravity plus fire, pretty good. Now, if you don't have confidence in Plumeria to actually survive combat, nor do you want your dancer to be attacking, then we have a variety of support options. She has high flat res, which means tier four sabotage employees are on the table. These also debuff without needing to dance. Unfortunately, Plumeria does not get blessing stats in Aether Raids, so res checking pure tanks may be an issue. There is also Freyr to worry about. Stillwater is probably a must for this, and I would probably go for Phantom Res if you don't need any bonus attack. Since Swint Dreams carries a lot of power, if you want to buff an ally even more, then you can run the Tier 4 Dancer B skills. We got Firestorm and Rock Slide Dance 3. If you want to use Prime 4, Sweet Dreams plus Rock Slide Dance would give 4 status effects, and that would include Dodge and Hexblade. As a Flying Dancer though, Plumeria of course has all fly mobility skills to utilize. She has warping skills for herself like Aerobatics, or you can bring Guidance Force skills for Team Warps. If you want to stay in Flower of Plenty's debuffing zone, Plumeria gets Attack and Res Hold for free as part of her remix. It's okay. Overall, Plumeria is going to continue being a support dancer mostly, as much as I think Gravity plus something like Flare Mirror would be really fun. For her own combat, it is extremely simple, and taking any kind of non-magic damage is probably death. I assume most would just stick with the new support skills we've gotten this year. Our last unit for today is Legendary Dimitri, fitting that he gets a remix and refine the same time as the Flame Emperor. Now, this Dimitri is a monster Lance Infantry unit with good stats and everything but res. Despite that, basically every Dimitri had distant counter because if you didn't one-shot him, chances were he one-shot your squishy mage butt. Let's start with Arid Bar's Refine. For the base weapon, it's the same with some upgrades. 16 Might Lance with Accelerate Specials. If Dimitri compares speed, he gets plus 7 speed for calculating only. When above 25% health, Dimitri gets plus 5 stats, heals 7 HP after combat, and has 40% dodge damage reduction. The Phantom Speed effect helps with dodge, and healing sustain upkeeps the weapon itself. For the Refine, if Dimitri initiates or is within 2 spaces of an ally, he gets plus 4 to all stats, full tempo effects, aka no guard and no special charge. Then he also has 50% DR piercing on every attack. Some solid effects for our one-eyed lord. Arid Bar has plus 9 to all stats, slaying, dodge for mostly, tempo, and then half DR piercing. Those last two effects actually make up the new tempo for B skills. But wait, it gets worse. Atrocity 2 is even better than before. If the foe has more than 40% HP, Dimitri inflicts minus 4 to attack speed and defense on them. He deals massive true damage per hit equal to 25% of his attack, and will get another 40% damage reduction for one hit. After combat, Dimitri inflicts basically attack, speed, defense, and red smoke debuffs, plus pulse smoke as well. The debuff improves to minus 6 to all stats, adds the guard status, and the debuff range is now 3 spaces. 
Keeping track with Atrocity, Dimitri essentially has plus 13 to all stats, 2 DR sources, and the insane 25% attack is true damage every hit, which is now also ignoring half of all DR skills. Tip the screw with the enemy's specials, he can inflict a 3 space pulse smoke to uncharged specials. He then got guard status with no special charge, that prevents any special charging in combat unless the foe has no guard themselves. Dimitri then has slang and no guard of his own. You really don't want to let Atrocity 2 activate. Legendary Dimitri is going to be disgusting. Unlike our Mythic Dancer, Dimitri is outfitted with so many good combat perks. As part of his remix, he's got Attack and Speed Clash 4, which is good. Dimitri is ideal for initiating and disrupting thanks to Atrocity's debuffs after combat. To get into a fight, he does have On Tempest 3, and you can now run Even Tempest as a seal for permanent 3 movement. That's going to sacrifice 2 skill slots though, although Assault Troop is another option, but it only goes in a line. If you're okay with 1 Tempest Sacred Seal, you can add Panic Smoke 4 to Dimitri's list of atrocities, Full Penalty Doubler, and Panic for even more chaos. Another alternative is Fatal Smoke to deny healing. If you want another action, Gale Force can be procced in 2 hits if you're running Flashing or Heavy Blade. You could even do something like Flash Sparrow or Pledge. Now, the one big downside for this refine is that on the enemy phase, if you want Tempo and the partial DR Pierce, then Dimitri needs to be in, or needs an ally within two spaces of him. This means you can't actually just send him off to one-man army entire groups. Somebody needs to keep an eye on the guy. As for what I assume will be Dimitri's most popular build, it's definitely going to be the Vital Astro plus Times Pulse setup. Pre-charge Vital Astro for a third source of percent DR. If Dimitri initiates, he can double proc Vital Astro thanks to Slang and no guard if he takes a counter. Meanwhile, he already has massive extra true damage and partial DR piercing. You can slip in no follow-up for consistent doubles. Attack to be finished for is the usual pairing for extra damage and healing. However, Distant Counter is for sure going to be another popular choice. You can go with Prime 4 or Distant Attack and Speed Solo for the bonus stats. Generally speaking, Legend Dimitri can work with all kinds of skills. Player phase, enemy phase, mixed phase, the guy's going to be potent at all times. He's in the unit that benefits immensely from Veil's scout support because if you can't pierce Dimitri's DR skills with something like a nuking special, then the guy is going to obliterate your squishy attacker. Fire sweep can be one way to chip away at him, but if Dimitri gets to proc Atrocity's debuffs first, then your team may not be able to charge their specials again. If you haven't invested Dimitri, you should be very happy with this refine. That's going to be it for part 2 of the update 7.11 refines. I am not looking forward to seeing more Dimitri's running around again. Let me know your thoughts on these refines and have fun with your new skills. If you missed part 1, I will link it in the end card and description. Next up, we will be going over the 4th ninja banner which has some pretty spicy units and skills itself. Thank you for watching and see you soon.